be sure to follow me on Instagram. There you can hang out with me and talk to me directly. Okay, so it's like 1.15 in the morning right now, and I am totally wired. And I guess it's just because I've been working out all the time, so I have like energy all the time, like I can't sleep. I feel like I'm gonna go upstairs and, and lay down after I record this and just crash out for like 10 hours, which kind of sucks. Anyway, I want to be a little bit interesting here. I want to try my hand at recording or at least covering the beginning of J. Michael Straczynski's run on Thor. We're gonna cover this first issue as a separate video because there's a lot to explain and also kind of a test thing, right? If you guys dig it, we'll probably just go ahead and cover each individual issue over the course of the week or over the course of however long it takes us to get through all 12, so 12 days. But for those of you guys who are who got into like Jason Aaron's Thor, uh, which is to say like Thor got a thunder with like Gore the God Butcher and all that kind of stuff. Those of you guys who are reading Thor right now and the idea that like you had the events of Siege on Asgard and so on and so forth, all that starts here, right? Like this all starts with J. Michael Straczynski's run. And this all comes off the tales of Ragnarok, right? We talked about that story before and in fact, we covered it. Uh, you'll find the whole Thor playlist down in the description. But the idea behind Ragnarok was to basically remove Thor from the landscape. And one of the things a lot of people don't know, if you go back and you read the old interviews from, from Kasada and all them, the idea was to actually kill off Thor and to remove him from the landscape for a while. Uh, ultimately, they didn't. J. Michael Straczynski brought him back uh, a few years later with, really, with this story. Uh, but the idea here was to basically bring Thor back in a way that would kind of return his character back to his roots, right? That fell in line with what it is that editor-in-chief uh, editor Joe Quesada wanted to do, right? Like, take all the characters and put them back to the way they used to be. Spider-Man goes back to being single. The Avengers go back to being the, the kind of classic mainstays of Marvel sort of uh, coming together on a single team. Hence the reason why we got the new Avengers by Brian Michael Bendis. The X-Men, their entire population was reduced down to 198, so it was a wholesale reshuffling of Marvel across the board, and Thor was no exception. And so what this does is it initially sort of picks up seemingly with Thor kind of recounting his life, right? The things that he's known, the successes he's had, fighting alongside the Warriors 3, ultimately becoming Donald Blake, falling in love with Sif, and then going on and, and eventually falling in love with Jane Foster, only to lose Jane Foster, different things along those lines. But it's basically kind of, you know, going over his life and, and the struggles he's dealt with, the fact that he basically faced off against these various forces during Ragnarok, died. It's just kind of a solid run over, right? It's, it's a way for J. Michael Straczynski to say, hey guys, here's what's going on with Thor. And so the big question that people probably have is, what has Thor been doing this entire time? Well, I can tell you exactly what Thor has been doing this entire time. Thor has been using Skillshare. <laughs> Hashtag sponsored video. So Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, and more, including photography and filmography. I especially dig the photography and filmography uh, parts of the, of the website because I've been doing like photos. I've been taking pictures for a long, long time, but I always knew there was always more to learn. And so like, like being on Skillshare and like learning all these things that photographers do in order to get like really, really good shots, street photography, portrait photography, different things like that. It's actually helped to blow up my personal Instagram. I am Rob Jefferson. It's basically been blowing it up, which is pretty awesome. But in order to get you guys started, Skillshare is giving away a free two month unlimited access trial to the first 500 people who click the link in the description. And after that, it's only around 10 bucks a month. So if you guys want to beef up your photography game, your filmography game, if you guys want to learn how to make videos like me, <laughs> go to Skillshare, click the link down in the description and uh, they will get you there. But regards to the story, what's going on with Thor is that he's not really alive, but he's not really dead. He's in what's called the void. Now, in my mind, the way I looked at this was that under normal circumstances, Thor would have died, right? Like he would have gone to where Hela was, right? Like he would have gone to that like afterlife more or less. Well, he probably would have gone to Valhalla, to be honest, because of the fact that he was such an honorable warrior, that kind of a thing. It looked like, and, and from what I recall, I think Straczynski had an old forum post that he made where he was talking about this. And he said the idea was that the reason why Thor didn't go there is because of the fact that Donald Blake anchored him to life, right? Because when it comes to the Donald Blake Thor relationship, and I want to talk about this because I feel like this is something that really confuses a lot of people, and now's as good of a time as any to really bring this up. This whole idea here with, with Donald Blake basically having this conversation with Thor as, as Donald Blake's literally going about and, and just kind of talking about things, heading towards his destination, grabbing Thor's hammer, different things like that. What he does is he basically says, we're the same person. And and the reason why you see Thor saying things like, well, there was an Odin spell that split us apart and, and like that doesn't, it doesn't work like that anymore, is because when you go back and you read the old Thor stories, when he first appeared back in 1962, right? So the old journey into mystery stories. What you got was, was essentially a byproduct of the time, right? Which is to say, ever since Action Comics issue number one in 1938 and the introduction of Superman as the first superhero, alter egos had been a thing of comic books, right? They were a mainstay, they were a staple. The concept of an alter ego was tried and true, something that you didn't really mess with too much. And so we got that with Thor, right? You go back and you read the old stories, you had this guy named Donald Blake, and Donald Blake was this, this doctor who had kind of a limp of sorts, he had a, had a handicap, and he was 
hanging out with Jane Foster, who he was in love with, and she didn't really return his affection. And there was like this weird alien invasion thing kind of going on. So he runs and he hides in a cave and he ends up uh, ends up finding a stick and he gets frustrated. He smacks a stick on a rock and the stick turns into Mjolnir and he turns into Thor. With, with the old Stan Lee and Jack Kirby comics, the way those were written, it was not Thor who was turning into Donald Blake and the other way around. It was basically this idea that like Donald Blake was channeling the power of Thor, right? So like he was possessing Thor's power and looking like Thor. That's the way it was originally done. All this changed in the Thor in uh, Thor issue number 159. And what Marvel did is they, they basically came out and said by virtue of uh, Jack Kirby's Tales of Asgard stories and, and Stan Lee writing the, writing the Thor stories is what they said was at some point in the past, Thor was an actual deity, right? He's an actual being that existed out there, but was full of hubris. He was full of arrogance. And so because of that, Odin wanted to teach Thor humility. And then in turn, he basically created or crafted the persona of Donald Blake, literally fabricated this guy out of nowhere and then wiped all of Thor's memories and, and knowledge of who he was and then stuck his essence inside of Donald Blake. And so as a result of that, Donald Blake went forward believing that he basically lived his entire life and that he was channeling the power of Thor. Uh, and so following that, the two characters were aware of the other's like actual purpose, where they came from, that kind of thing. But all that changed again when Walt Simonson took over Thor with issue number 300 37. Now, technically, Walt Simonson was drawing Thor with issue 260, right? He drew issues 260 to 271, but he took over as writer with issue number 337. And with Donald Blake, he snipped that up quick, fast, and in a hurry. And so what ended up happening is in, in uh, the introduction of Beta Ray Bill in that comic, that what Odin did is he actually removed the enchantment of Donald Blake, right? He basically said that like Thor and Donald Blake are no longer the same person, that this kind of, you know, magical essence, this being crafted out of nowhere, this Donald Blake persona is going to be pulled away from Thor and it's going to be stuck inside of Beta Ray Bill's hammer Stormbreaker so that Walt Simon can use it in the future if he wanted to or anybody else could. And so as a result of that, from that point going forward, Thor was no longer associated with Donald Blake. They, they had nothing to do with each other and Thor was always just Thor. And it ran like that for decades, right? It ran like that for years and years and years right up until now. And this is why J. Michael Straczynski's run is so important is because it fell in line with the charter of what it is that Joe Quesada wanted to do, set everything back to right, set everything to the way that it was supposed to be, uh, which is to say setting characters back to the old school line of thinking. And so that's why these two guys are having this conversation is because the essence of Donald Blake is reinstated, right? It's basically back here again. Donald Blake is his own being out there somewhere. And he basically anchors Thor to the real world, right? So like, it's, it's still like a singular physical body, but it's basically the essence of Thor, the mind of Thor, his spiritual existence, more or less, sitting in this void. And Donald Blake is housing the physical body, right? So like what'll happen is eventually they'll switch. And that's exactly what takes place. This whole conversation that goes on here is Donald Blake basically telling, uh, telling Thor, you have to come back because if you don't, the world will fall to ruin. Now, in terms of how it is that Donald Blake knows this, Donald Blake doesn't, he's really kind of ambiguous here, right? And that was sort of J. Michael Zinsky saying, hey, look, Thor just has to come back. And for the most part, like, it was sort of hand wavy. It didn't really get offer a whole lot in the way of an explanation. And fans didn't really care, right? Straczynski knew that. That for the most part, fans weren't really going to care how it is that Donald Blake knew these things. All fans really wanted was for Thor to come back. And this was as good of a reason as any to basically bring him back here, right? And so as a result of that, where literally Thor says, like, I don't want to return because I've seen what happens in this life that I live, I'm part of the cycle of Ragnarok, right? For those of you guys who aren't familiar with that, Ragnarok is the, the end times of Asgard, right? The destruction of Asgard. The difference here is that where Ragnarok is essentially like the end of all things for all the Asgardian beings, what Marvel ended up doing was basically giving us this scenario whereby all the Asgardians, since the very beginning of all things in existence, all Asgardians have repeatedly died and been reborn as part of the cycle of Ragnarok, seemingly an unlimited number of times. And in fact, Marvel actually came back and they modified uh, Thor issue number 159, which gave us the reason why it was that Thor was banished to Earth as, as Donald Blake, and actually tacked onto that and said that Odin did that, one, of course, to teach Thor humility, but two, in order to escape the cycle of Ragnarok. It was the one thing that Odin had never done before. He'd never cast Thor down to Earth. The cycle of Ragnarok had always gone through the process of Thor staying on Asgard, and then everything comes to an end, and then everything's reborn again, and, and so on and so forth. And so as a result of that, Donald Blake's response is, yeah, man, but like, that's the nature of things, right? It's who you are. Like, you, you're a hero. You're a savior. Like, yes, you're going to lose people over the course of your life, but it doesn't take away from the, the achievements that you've made. It doesn't take away from like the great things that you've done. You have to return to Earth because if you don't, then ultimately the planet is going to fall to ruin. And so as a result of that, where Thor is sort of fighting against these various beings and various demons that try to keep him there, in the end, he ends up summoning his hammer, right? He ends up summoning Mjolnir to himself, being more or less reborn as, as Thor. And so what this does is it kind of goes forward from here, right? And so essentially what this does is kind of give us the way Thor always was, right? I mean, you never really saw it this way. If you looked at the old Stanley and Jack Kirby comics, but this is basically how it was. It's almost like a Bruce Banner Incredible Hulk dichotomy insofar that Donald Blake is currently housing the physical form, the physical body of both Thor and Donald Blake. He's walking around.
down. When the, the stick gets hit on the ground or whatever it is, and, and Thor's activated, they switch places, right? Like Thor's physical essence goes into the body. He becomes Donald Blake. Donald Blake actually goes to the void and they, they kind of go back and forth as they need to. But of course, this leads to, to Donald Blake taking up residence in uh, Broxton, Oklahoma. Now, the reason why he chose Broxton, Oklahoma is because that's where the hammer land. But it's also the place where ultimately Thor's going to start, start making his move and building everything up, right? And so the cool thing about this is, is that what it does is it has Donald Blake renting a hotel room, Donald Blake going upstairs into his room, and really for the first time since the events of Ragnarok, and really for the first time in decades, which is a pretty big deal for a lot of Thor fans, Donald Blake takes a stick, smacks it on the ground, and Thor returns in his reborn form. It's really cool. For people who have been like a fan of Thor for a very long time or who have been reading for a really, really long time, it was a great return. It was a great reprieve. And again, that's what Kasada and Straczynski were looking for. They were looking for this idea of bringing Thor back in a way to where it could kind of reinvigorate interest, right? It could be like old school Thor as you remember him, him and Donald Blake, that kind of a thing. But with that being said, guys, we're going to go ahead and bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comics Explain, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Core. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like. And yeah, let me know down in the comments section what you guys think. If you guys want me to continue this and, and, and whatnot. But let me know what you guys think, and uh, I will catch you all later. Peace.